Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes. Uh, I'm Barry Bryson, and we're continuing our study of Paul's co-workers, and we're going to take four different sessions to talk about Timothy, because Paul and Timothy's relationship is a special uh, relationship. They really do have a parent-child relationship. Uh, we meet Timothy in Acts chapter 16. At the beginning, we're going to read that in just a second. We know he has a a mother who is Jewish, a grandmother who is Jewish, um, and um, we also know that his father was Greek. But the Jews at the time believed you were Jewish matrilineally, and so to the Jews, he is a Jew. And because of that, Paul circumcises him, something he refuses to do to Titus, who is not Jewish, another one of his very close co-workers, another young man he calls his son in the faith. Um, but, but Timothy is special to him, and I think he as well is special to Timothy. Timothy now has a spiritual father like he never had before. No matter how good his Greek father was, his faith was in the God of Abraham. And in Paul, he has a, a, a father, a spiritual father. Paul always refers to him as his son, and not just as his son, my beloved son, he calls him in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 2, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from the Lord, from our Lord Jesus Christ. And then in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 2, he says, to Timothy, my beloved son, may grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. And then in chapter 2, um, he calls him, you therefore my son. He's his beloved son, his true son. You are my true son. Therefore, my true son, he says in chapter 2, verse 1, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So they did have a special relationship together, and I think that in itself is, is something that we need to, to pay attention to. Not everybody gets married and has kids. You know, Peter had a wife that he traveled with. Paul did not. Paul never got married. But Paul, people in the, in the New Testament, they, they, they create families. The way Paul created a family with, with a Priscilla and Aquila at times, and certainly with Timothy, where he had children like Timothy and, and Titus that he referred to as his sons. Um, um, and he felt that way about them, the way Tabitha created a family with the other widows, and, and, and they couldn't bear to part from her when she passed. There are a variety of ways for families in the Lord to look. And, and just because Paul was never married and never had children doesn't mean he was not able to play a paternal role and a necessary one with this young man. And Timothy was that young man. And Timothy almost immediately becomes indispensable to Paul. We meet him in Acts chapter 16, uh, verse 1. This is right after Paul and Barnabas have separated. And Paul has taken Silas with him. And he's revisiting those congregations in what is present-day Turkey that they had reestablished. And he goes back to Lystra and Derby, a, a twin cities. And we remember what happened to him back in chapter 14 when he was in Lystra and Derby. He was stoned and left outside the city as dead. The people there wanted to worship him as God, as God, as, as Zeus and Hermes, you know, he and Barnabas. And they, when they wouldn't let them, they got attacked by the crowd and Paul was stoned and left outside. This city is dead. And after they left him there, Paul just got up and went back inside the city. I mean, it's such a brave, brazen thing to do. To say, you have no power over me is an amazing thing that he did. And they go back to Lystra and Derby, And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy. Timothy is already a disciple. He's already a Christian. The son of a Jewish woman who was a believer but his father was a Greek. We learn about Lois and Eunice in 2 Timothy. We'll get to them later. And he was well spoken of by the brethren who were in Lystra and Iconium. Same things are said about Silas, well spoken of by the brethren in Jerusalem. So now he's got these two young men that are just stellar. Uh, that, and he's, he's no longer the mentee. <laughs> he's no longer with his mentor Barnabas. Now he's the father figure with these two young men, Timothy and Silas. And Paul wanted this man to go with him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those parts, for they knew that his father was Greek, and that a Greek father would never let his child be circumcised. The Greeks thought that was mutilation. 
And so then he goes with him, and he's part of his team for the rest of the time. And immediately, I mean immediately in this very chapter, um, he becomes something of Paul's troubleshooter, the guy that Paul sends back to check on things, and specifically back to Macedonia. He writes about this in 1 Thessalonians. He, you know, he, gets, he goes to, to, to Macedonia, he receives the Macedonian call in the middle of chapter 16, and then in chapter 16 and 17, he goes to Macedonia, Philippi first. He and Silas end up in jail. Timothy does not. We don't know why. But he and Silas end up in jail, and then they go to Thessalonica. They're there just a few weeks, and the, the Jews cause trouble for them there. They go to Berea. They're there just a short time, and the Jews cause trouble for them there. And Paul ends up in Athens and worried, worried about, about those other congregations. And at some point, Silas rejoins Paul, and Mark does, and then Paul sends Timothy back to Thessalonica. Seems like he has sent Paul. Silas to Berea as well, but he, which we mentioned when we talked about Silas. But, but he, he, he writes about Timothy, sending Timothy back. And he sends Timothy back to Macedonia multiple times in the book of Acts. He sends him back in chapters 19 and 20. And, and, and he takes Timothy uh, in chapter 20 uh, with him when he goes to Jerusalem and gets arrested. Uh, he makes sure Timothy is there by his side, as is Luke. But I'm getting ahead of myself. In 1 Thessalonians, he writes to the brethren there about how Timothy came back and brought this good report. Now his heart is happy and, and everything's okay. Um, and, um, and so he sends him there. Also, we read in the Corinthian correspondence in chapter 1, verse 4, verse 17, chapter 2, verses uh, uh, Second Corinthians, excuse me, chapter one, verse nineteen. Also, at the end of Second Corinthians, in chapter sixteen, verses ten and eleven, there are multiple visits back to Achaia, where Paul keeps sending Timothy back to Corinth. Where he also sends Titus. By the way, we'll talk about that when we get to Titus after we study Timothy. Um, but he keeps sending Timothy back, and then when he's in jail, he sends Timothy to Ephesus because he's got to take care of business at Ephesus. And it's there we meet him when we read First and Second Timothy. Um, so I wanted in this session just to, to establish their relationship. It's a father-son relationship that he has with Timothy. He has really with no one else as deeply felt. And we're going to see this when we read First and Second Timothy. And Timothy's role throughout the rest of his missionary journeys until he makes that last visit to Jerusalem is for Paul to keep sending him back to places where they have been as his troubleshooter, as his emissary, to, to, to bring back report, to, to take the message that he has to have delivered. And we see this happening in Macedonia and Achaia and in Asia when he sends him to Ephesus to be the minister at this church. Tomorrow we want to look in some of those letters and see what Paul has to say about Timothy and just how deeply he loves him and cares about him. We'll do that next time. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes.